God is amazing. Last week we had looked at just plain old faith. And I told you that faith and hope are kind of partners and they go together. So today we're going to be looking at hope. Can you have hope without having faith or can you have faith without having hope? They kind of go together, don't they? So today we're going to be looking at uh, hope. We're going to be looking in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 16. And we're going to be going on into uh, Romans chapter 5. But Merriam-Webster, I love that guy uh, and his definitions. Sometimes I don't always agree with his definitions, but he's supposed to be the expert. He defines hope as a verb to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen. How many of you guys are wanting something to happen that is true? I do. Each and every day I wake up and I have a little bit of hope and I have some faith to go with that. But I'm hoping things are true in my life. So as a verb, we can see that. And then it goes on and it says, as a noun, it is a desire accompanied by expectation in the belief or fulfillment in something that is true. Is God true today? So if God is true, then we can have hope in who? We can have hope in God, right? Because God is true, and because of a little bit of faith, we can have that hope to go with it. So in Romans chapter 4, and beginning with verse 16, it says, Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring, not only those who are in the law, but those who have faith in Abraham. He was the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom we believe. Those who call him that God gives life to the dead and calls into being that we're not. And in verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. So shall your offspring be, without weakening unto his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. And see, Abraham was a hundred years old when he became the father of who? Who did Abraham become the father of? Isaac. Isaac. He was also the father of Ishmael. But at a hundred years of age, he became the father of Isaac, who became the Israel nation. And so there was just hope, and it goes on and it says, just as his wife, everything inside her was dead, basically. She was past the, the time of childbearing uh, point. 90 years of age, and she gives birth to her son. Wow. I don't know about you, but if I told my wife that, uh, you know, I wanted her to have a baby at her age, she would just laugh at me. She would say, it ain't happening. <laughs> but imagine to be 90 years of age and give birth to your first child. Or to be a hundred years old as a guy and to start your family at a hundred years of age. Man, I, I would be thinking, man, I'm going to have to clothe and feed that child. I'm going to be 120 by the time that kid gets through college. So just a little bit of hope goes through and it ensures everything that we're dealing with. So Abraham had a little bit of hope. His hope real today. Is there hope for us and our nation today? And is hope real? Is hope real? What do we hope in today? You guys say, I hope Dave has, you know, I hope you finish pastor and get preaching before 12 o'clock because we want to go out and enjoy the barbecue. So see, we can have hope, and hope is something that is real. Hope is the goal setter to faith. How many of you guys know this without? Hope, being the goal setter, you don't have faith. So it comes in 
and it sets the groundwork for everything that we're going to do with faith and hope. And next week we're going to be looking at love. But did you know without hope we can be lost? How many of you guys had hope when you were in school? I just hope I make it through 12th grade. I hope that my first six years in high school, you know, uh, don't turn out to be eight. You say, Dave, uh, you're only supposed to go to the four years of high school. I know that. I'm just saying. But just imagine that little bit of hope. You like that, huh? I went through uh, high school in uh, four years, right? Well, it took me six years. No, it took me eight years. But see, the hope that we have is something that is true. And we hope in something that we know to be true, that we can establish what is going on in our life. How many of you guys hope for tomorrow to be better than it is today? How many of you hope that your yesterdays are better than what your parents had? Or your today is better than what it was yesterday? See, we have a hope that comes in, and hope is something that is true, and without hope in our life, you and I are lost. Because without hope, what's the point of going on? I hope for things that are unseen. I'm going to put my faith in God, but I'm going to put my hope in things that I can really know that are true. In Romans chapter 5, and in verse 1, Therefore, since we have seen and been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace into which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glorify the sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God has loved us and poured out his love on us. See, you and I can have a hope that because of who God is, that we know that God loves us, and that is true. God Thank you for the hope that I have in you, that you love me so much. God, thank you that I can put all hope in you. I tell you what, we can't put hope in humanity. You say, well, I disagree with that, Dave, because I hope that, you know, things get better. Well, that's true. But what I'm saying is if we entirely rely upon humanity for our hope, we're going to be disappointed. Any of you guys ever been disappointed before? Have you ever been disappointed by your best friend? See, hope and faith are BFFs. They're best friends forever. So hope and faith are always going to go together. But where we have hope, we can go by and we can do that. And we can live in this time that we have for hope. What about in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11? It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope for the what? The future. How many of you guys are glad that God knows the plans for us? And I can put my hope in them and I can say, God, thank you, Lord, that you know the plans for me and you're giving me hope for a brighter future. God, thank you for those things mom and dad, uh, Phyllis's dad is going to be 91 on the 26th of this month. He has dementia and her mom has Alzheimer's. But see, we hope that things are going to get better in their life. We hope that in this situation that we can rely upon God's word and we hope that we can go back and say, God, we know that you have the plans laid out for us. God, we know that the plans are laid out for Richard and Norma. God, we put our hope in you that, God, you're going to take care of everything. How many of you guys can do that and have a hope in God that the situation is taken care of? Sometimes 
Well, sometimes it's hard to hope, isn't it? Sometimes, as I said last week, it's hard to have that little bit of faith. But did you know that hope changes you and I? Hope comes in and it changes everything that you and I are able to do because of just a little bit of hope. What about when somebody is in a hospital and you're sitting there and I hope they get better. See, hope changes everything about us. It comes in and it establishes the background. I hope that tomorrow things are better. In Psalms 25, verses 1 through 7, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. Wow, that's a pretty good promise. In you, Lord, I put my trust. So if I put my trust in God, then I'm hoping that God is to be true and to be honest. And everything's never going to be unchanging. And in verse 2 of Psalms 25, I trust in you. Do not let me put, be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. And see, we have a hope that when we have Christ in our life, that we're not going to be put to shame. Yes, the world's going to make fun of you, but the hope is that we have eternity with Jesus Christ forever and ever. And we're not going to be put to shame. And our enemies are not going to triumph over us. That's pretty good hope. I don't know about you, but it brings encouragement to me. And in verse 4, it says, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Lord, thank you that I can come to you and I can put my hope in you. And God, you change the circumstances of my life. And I'm going to completely trust you because of a little bit of faith. And I'm going to come by and I'm going to put my hope in you. And in verse 6, it says, Remember the Lord, your great mercy, and love, for they are old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Does hope change us? Does hope change our circumstances? Yes, hope changes us. It changes us from the inside out because we have a hope in Jesus Christ. What about, we can take a look and we say, hope wins. Did you guys know that hope wins? Hope always wins. And in Psalms 37, verses 8 and 9, it says, refrain from your anger and turn your wrath. Do not fret; it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Wow. If I put my hope in God, and I put my faith in God, I'm hoping that I have eternity with Christ. And I'm going to be able to inherit the land called heaven. What about Psalms 37 and the verse 34? It says, Hope in the Lord and keep His ways. And he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, he will see it. Hope wins. When you and I put our hope in God, we win. How many of you guys like to win? For you guys that are uh, Dodgers fans, I'm sorry. The Giants <laughs> beat you yesterday. And I honestly felt bad because the Giants are already out of it. And I was hoping the Dodgers would have won. Don't tell the other friends that I know that are Giants fans that, but I was really hoping that the Dodgers would have won. Why? Because the Giants are out of it. So I was hoping that they would have won. But hope wins. Did you know that hope will always win and we're going to inherit the kingdom of God? Just because of a little bit of hope. What about hope will never leave us alone? 
You say, well, I don't know about that. Well, let's take a look at what it says in Joshua 1 and verses 5 and 9. It says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to, the, to give to their ancestors. And in verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That is what hope does for us. It never leaves us alone. And we have a hope that because of who God is, that we can put our trust in God and say, God, because of this, I hope that my future is brighter than it was. Did you know that hope builds us up? Let's take a look at that. In Proverbs 23, verses 17 and 19. It says, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future of hope for you, and hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart in the right path. I don't know about you, but because of who God is, I have a hope. I have a hope that things are changing. I have a hope that it's going to be building me up. I have a hope because of who God is that I have a brighter tomorrow. What about in Proverbs 24, verses 13 and 14? Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. I'm glad that I can put my trust in God. I'm glad that I can come by and say, God, I hope that we have a brighter tomorrow. What about Micah 7 and 7? It says, But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord, and I wait for God, my Savior, and my God who will hear me. I am so glad that God hears me. And I can say, God, because of who you are, I hope that you have things under control. God, I'm going to put my faith in you. And God, I thank you for that. What about Matthew 12 and 21? In his name, the nations will put their hope. See, you and I can put our hope in the one that is true. We can put our hope in God. What about in Acts 24, verses 14 through 16? However, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law, and it is written to the prophets. And I have the same hope in God as these men themselves, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked, so that I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God. Is hope worth everything? Hope is worth everything. I want you to know that you and I can put our hope in God because He is true and righteous. And we have a faith in that. In Romans uh, 15 and 13, it says, May the God of hope. Ah, see, God is the God of hope. And it says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope and the power of the Holy Spirit. Faith and hope 
work hand in hand. We have to have faith and we have to have hope. Hope comes in and it sets the goals and it says, okay, I'm hoping for this. And the faith comes in and it says, because you have just a small amount of faith, we are going to go hand in hand and we're going to walk side by side. Hope is pretty awesome. What about in Psalms 42 and verse 11? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, and I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. What about Psalm 62 and 5 and 6? Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him, with a capital H. Our hope comes from the Creator of the universe. And we have a hope that tomorrow will be better than it is today. And then we come by and we combine that with our faith and we say, God, I know that because of who you are, we can put our hope in you. What about Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31? Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You and I can renew our strength because of God's hope that He's given to you and I. And then they will soar on the wings of eagles, and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. See, when we put our hope in God, we're going to be able to soar with the eagles. Wow. Hope is pretty important to us. Hope's never going to leave us alone. Hope is real. I want you to know that hope is coming. See, you and I are still hoping the, for the return of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and we look forward to that. So hope is real. Hope changes us. Hope wins. Hope has never left us alone. Hope builds us up. You say, Dave, what does all that have to do with what we're going through in our life? Because of the faith and because of the hope, we say, God, thank you for taking care of my situation. God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you that I can put my hope in you because I can't put hope in financial stability, the world economy. I can't put my hope in that, but I can always put my hope in God. I had a cousin, and he had, had everything invested in Hill Packard. And when Hill Packard took a dump, he thought his life was over because he had no hope. And he ended up taking his own life because he had lost hope, because he had put his hope in the wrong thing. But when you and I put hope in Jesus Christ, Hope will always win. Hope will always win for you and I. Regardless of what the world tells us, hope will win. If you would stand with me this morning. Maybe we just need a little bit more hope in our life. But I want you to know that if we put our hope in God, we always win. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, I thank you that we can come and put our hope in you because you're unchanging. And Lord, because of the hope, we have faith. And God, we ask that you would just increase our faith, increase our hope. And Lord, give us a fresh start. Lord, I ask that you would just bless the food. Lord, we thank you for the hands that have prepared it. Lord, we ask that you just richly bless this time of fellowship. And Father, we give you praise in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.